It seems like nothing is more controversial in the tech space than the application of thermal paste. As a relatively new YouTuber, I learned this the hard way after posting my first few videos. After some criticism, I decided to do a short comparison of GPU thermal paste applications, but that video was a bit rushed and not well thought out. So today, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at a few different thermal paste applications and determining once and for all what the best method is. My previous GPU thermal paste video had a number of issues, one of which was that I tried to make it fit into the 60 second YouTube short format, which is incredibly difficult. I also used a pretty old and low powered R7 240 because that's all I really had available. The problem with this was that the GPU die is small, square, and doesn't get very hot. Most modern GPUs have a much larger and often rectangular die, so the dot method that I recommended in that video might not translate well to a lot of graphics cards. So in this video, we'll be using the ASUS ROG Strix 1070 Ti, which was very generously sent in from a viewer and patron, Mango SFX. The 1070 Ti isn't the most powerful GPU on the market by any means, but it does have a 314 square millimeter rectangular die and can produce a decent amount of heat. The only issue I ran into with this card was that I didn't have any system around that could fit it in the case. So even though it seemed like a terrible idea, I grabbed my Athlon 2 X4640 test bench from some of the first videos I made on the channel, slapped on the 1070 Ti, and ran a 3D Mark Port Royal ray tracing benchmark. Now I was fully expecting this not to work due to the severe CPU bottleneck, but because the Port Royal benchmark was so taxing on this non-RTX card, the GPU was running at 100% load the entire time, and the CPU load rarely went above 40%. So at least for today's testing, we're not actually running into a CPU bottleneck. Now, this is not the case with other, more realistic 3D workloads like actual games, but that's for a different video. And if that seems interesting to you, maybe make sure you get subscribed. For this video, I picked the four most common application methods that people have recommended in the comments to try out. I applied Arctic MX4 using each method twice, and then completed three stress test runs with each application. So six total runs for each method. Huge shout out to my sponsors, Q-Tips and Bun Coffee Filters for making this video a reality. In all seriousness, I actually did use a lot of thermal paste for this video, as well as a few previous ones, which led to me buying this comically large syringe of MX4, which I thought was pretty funny. After testing, I tried my best to remove the PCB from the heatsink in a perpendicular fashion so that we could see how the thermal paste spread on the die. For each test run, I used the 3 d Mark Port Royal Stress Test, which runs the benchmark 20 times consecutively. This ended up being plenty of time for the GPU temps to level out. I used MSI Afterburner to lock the fan speed at 50%, as well as raise the power and temp limits, although the triple fan Strix card never even came close to hitting the temp limit. I don't have an incredibly sophisticated way of measuring or maintaining a steady ambient temperature, so I decided to measure the room temperature with a standard thermometer at the beginning, middle, and end of each stress test, and then compare the max GPU temperature to the max recorded ambient temperature. This probably isn't perfect, but it's what I was able to do, and the results seem to be pretty consistent from run to run. First up, we have the thin spread method. Because the GPU doesn't have a heat spreader, like a CPU does, it's important that the entire die is covered with thermal paste, so many people say this method is best because it ensures that the entire GPU is covered. Some also claim that, because it is spread in a thin layer, there is less thermal paste for the heat to have to pass through, resulting in better cooling. Others recommend the X method, claiming that it spreads more evenly once mounting pressure is applied. Similar to the X is the line. This, at least for rectangular dies, supposedly can get even coverage across the die as well. And lastly, we have the classic dot. This works great for CPUs, but as was pointed out in my last thermal paste video, might not spread fully on a non-square die. When removing the heatsink after testing, we can go ahead and see the result of each of these applications. The thin spread, as expected, seems to have covered the entire die pretty evenly, with just a little bit of thermal paste squeezing out the sides. The X pattern also seemed to fully cover the die with no problems. Although there was some paste to squeeze it out the sides, but this shouldn't really be an issue. The line method was basically the exact same result as the X, with maybe just a little bit less paste wasted. 
I was worried about the dot either not covering the entire rectangular shaped die or having a lot of excess, but it seemed that the paste was actually spread really evenly with not as much overflow as I expected. So just looking at this, it seems like all of these methods managed to cover the die pretty well. But does this mean that all four methods will equally cool our GPU? Yes. Yes, it does. Each of these managed a max GPU temp of 34 degrees Celsius over the max ambient temperature. And to make sure there wasn't anything funny happening that was causing these identical results, I ran the same test using the thin layer method, but using Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut instead, which should theoretically perform a bit better than the Arctic MX4. The Cryonaut measured a max temp of one degree lower at 33 degrees Celsius over ambient. I also ran the test with different fan speeds, and this produced a different max temp result. I could have tested with less thermal paste to appease the people that will inevitably comment that I used too much, and I almost did. But I would feel really stupid if I ran this GPU just to try and prove a point. If you're watching this video because you're wanting to know how to properly replace the thermal paste on your GPU, just make sure that there's enough to cover the entire die. Even if you need to apply it, put the heatsink on, and then remove it just to double check. I would recommend the line or X method, as both of those were pretty easy to do. If you still think that I'm somehow leaving performance on the table, I would encourage you to provide some type of data, evidence, or anything really other than a personal anecdote to prove that point. I'm very much open to criticism and only want to get better. If you enjoyed this type of video, maybe check out my budget SSD shootout, which I'll have a link for in a card or in the description. If you want to support the channel so that I can make more content like this, consider becoming a patron. Or if you're looking to buy either of the thermal pastes that I used in this video, there are affiliate links in the description that also help me out. But that's about it for this one, so as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I hope to see you in the next one.